Welcome to Inspired Conversations. My name is Nkandu Belts and our guest today is Florence Beto. Welcome to the show, Florence. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm great. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be um, on this show. Oh, you're welcome. So what drew you to modeling? Um, the creative side of it and yeah. the fact that you can be whoever you want to be like in your photos yes and start up you can start off your own trend yeah which is what I really like about it because you can try new things and yeah not just one look you can do lots of things with modeling wonderful so how did your new trend start well I've always like um, wanted to like you know go viral I've always seen people's stories on like you know social media and it's like oh this person has gone viral yeah and I've always wanted to do that too mm -hmm. so um, I decided that you know seeing that dark skinned people aren't allowed to really wear like bright lipstick or um, bright colors yes. I wanted to like you know do that because it makes me feel happy and I love color so wonderful so you went to start to redefine beauty Basically, yeah, I wanted to do that. I wanted to say that you can wear whatever you want without people like, you know, judging you and just, you know, it's happy. If it makes you happy, then why care about what everyone else what is saying? Ev yeah, that is very brave, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you, you know, like, yeah, if you're happy with what you're doing, yeah. why worry about what other people are thinking about? So um, what do you love most about this trend that you have set? I love the fact that although I am getting some negative, like, you know, um, negative exposure from it. It's really? Also, yeah. What? It's, also, it's, it's really good, like, people call me a clown because obviously I dyed my hair pink and yeah. then, like, putting on really bright lipstick. Yeah. That's something that peop most people are afraid to try out. Mm -hmm. And I was brave enough to try that out and, I don't know, it took me places. Like, yeah. Yeah, now I'm, like, a big hit on the internet, but... Yeah. Not in reality, so. <laughs> so <laughs> now let's let's go a few steps back, you know, to the to the pink hair. So what inspired you to do that? Well, I've always wanted to like have pink hair. Yeah, Because I feel like <laughs> I've always wanted to have pink hair. I don't know why, because I love the color pink. Yes. So um, one day I was involved in a hair show um, for like Matrix. It's a ha yeah. they run like a hair show, and um, so I just went in and they're like, oh, we would like to dye your hair pink. And first I was like, oh my God, what's my mom going to think about <laughs> this? I'm getting kicked out of the house. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what, why not? Like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. So I just went for it. And yeah, after the show, I really loved my hair. Yeah. And I started taking photos. I was like, oh, I like how I look. And people were like saying, oh yeah, it's pretty sick. I was like, yeah, yeah I really love it. So with um, the, the negative comments that were coming through social media, yeah. um, there were also some positive comments, isn't yes, it? Yeah. Yes, definitely there was. Like, and then people know that I'm reading, like, obviously I'm reading the comments. Yeah. But, yeah, people still, people are entitled to their own opinions. Yeah. And I have nothing against people who are saying really negative things about me because mm -hmm. everyone is entitled to that. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm getting some positive comments and also some really negative comments, but yeah. at the same time, I'm just going to look at the positive sides of things and yes, yeah. keep doing what I'm doing. But those negative comments, because that is some kind of bullying in a way, and we know in Australia, bullying is quite yeah. high. So how do you deal with, you know, because it's not easy to just say, I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah. You know, because it will make you feel down, you know, just like everyone else when they say bad things about, you know, us. Yeah. We all feel upset. So how did you deal with those kind of, you know, sh words that were being thrown at you? Well, first, I'm not going to lie, like, I actually did, like, um, it did affect my life. Like, I felt like, you know, I was really depressed. And, yeah, because I'm a happy person, no one really knew about it. So I'll read the comments and stuff. And, yes, yeah, some of them were so bad that it actually made me cry. Like, yeah, someone once said, because I also model for um, Freedom Couture, and yes. she makes wigs for celebrities. Yeah. So um, one person said that, oh, um, why are you putting a wig on a monkey? So it's, when, when I read that, like, unconditionally, I just started crying. And it wasn't because I was hurt, but I was like, people do know that I'm reading these comments. And, That's so disrespectful. Yeah, and some people, like, say, go kill yourself. And I was like, yeah. So it, it is pretty bad, some of them, but then I... I want to realize that any kind of exposure is good for me yeah because I'm trying to get a message out there and I'm not going to let people's negativity um be the reasons as mm. to why I stopped doing the things that I love yeah so so did you get any help did you talk to somebody about no, it I don't talk to people about my problems because like um yeah it's just not something you talk to people about and 
yeah. who, who really understand, like, you know, someone calling me a monkey. But then I realized I'm like, I know it for sure I'm not a monkey. No, you're not. So why should I give into that? So yeah. it's kind of like I help myself. Mm. I empowered myself. I was like, I'm not going to, like, you know, let this get to me. And, yeah, there were people, like, calling me from, like, my friends from Canada. And they were telling me that, you know, I shouldn't give into people's comments. No. And people are only doing that because, like, if they see you doing good, they want you to, like, Get back to where you were. But it's it's also the idea that you need to conform, you need to look yeah. a certain way, and um, yeah, and, and and you sort of like decided not to follow yeah, no, what that's, society that's what tells you I've, to do. Yeah, I've always, I always know that I'm I'm out here. If I get lots of like you know exposure, I want to send a message out there that you can be whatever you want. Yeah. You don't have to conform to what society wants you to conform to. And there's always going to be people hating on you. Even mm. celebrities have like people hating on them. Mm. So it's not like I'm the only one who's receiving all these hateful messages. Yeah. Everyone else receives it. So I, yeah, I shouldn't take it personally. No, but then, you know, usually you find that the people that do these things, um, yeah, they, they're pretty sad themselves. Yeah, some of them are like mothers and like people who are way older than me and they're just attacking me on this social media and I'm like, yeah. for all you know, this could be like your daughter or like, mm. you know, it's someone, your niece. Yeah. But yeah, you're still abusing me and you don't even know me and I'm not that type of person that yeah. would like, you know, comment. I've never commented on any negative comment. Yeah, it's true, yeah, because once you do that, you yeah. start a conversation with them. So the best thing to do is just, yeah, step back. Yeah, now, I, I wouldn't waste my time on, you know, replying to people. Even people who comment, like, yeah. positive things, I don't really like. Yeah. Comment, I just like it. Yeah. But, yeah, I've never commented or replied to anyone. So what about, you know, because being in the modeling industry, you know, it's, it's hard itself. It's very stressful. And, yeah. you know, there's a few certain type of people like you <laughs> that do fit in, in there. But then it's also a very competitive industry. Yeah. And then when you're receiving this kind of bullying from people that are outside the industry, what about, like, what advice would you give to just, you know, any young person who is going through a tough time, whether at school being bullied or online? Um, well, don't do what I did and not talk to anyone about it because it actually does help knowing that there's people out there that care about you. Mm. So um, try and talk to someone that you care about, like, you know, someone that you trust. And don't give into, like, don't use people's negativity, the reasons, like, you know, as an excuse for you to give up. Because we're always, as human beings, we're always looking for excuses to, you know, give up. And it's so easy for us to give up. So when you do give up, you're giving, like, people the, um, the win over, like, you know, something that you could be doing potentially good. Like, we don't know where our path is going. Like, we don't know what destiny has in plan for us. So if we just turn away from um, one barrier, then you're just, like, you're closing so much pathways for yourself. Mm. Wonderful. Well, we'll take a short break and uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the photos that went viral. Welcome back. So Florence, just before the break, um, you talked about your message, but before yeah. we can cover that, um, let's go back to talk a little bit about your childhood. So a lot of articles say you were born in Australia and um, of course you grew up here all your life. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your growing up? Um, so I would just like to get this out there. I was not born in Perth. <laughs> I was born in Uganda and we moved here in 2005 when I was like seven years old. So yeah, me too, myself, I'm shocked reading them articles saying that I was born in Perth. Yeah. I wish, but <laughs> yeah, the reality is I was born in Uganda. Yeah. And yeah, so basically I started schooling here in year three. And when I came over from Africa, you know, I was eating good food. So I was kind of chubby when I was, <laughs> when I was younger. And yeah. yeah, so starting from there, um, I started like going through some, you know, um, <clears throat> low self-esteem because I was quite chubby as a child. Mm. So I, all my friends were like, you know, size eight and I was a size 14, which was not in the social norm, you know. Everyone has to be skinny. That's all I saw on TV. That's yeah. all I was seeing around me. The people around me were all skinny and yeah. So you tried to conform to look like everyone else? Yeah, so that's what I did. It's not that I wanted to like do it. Like yeah. I know I loved myself, but then at the end of the day, like, 
everyone else was receiving the attention and there was just me in the shadow. So I wanted to feel like special. So I started like, you know, starving myself and not eating right so I can be a certain size. So you were losing weight on purpose. Basically, that's what I was thinking. And, it's so um, funny, I'm <coughs> smiling about no, it. No, I, I know. It's, um, it's, it's a very big issue because, you know, yeah. there's a lot of... Um, it, um, I don't know if I'd be qualified to say eating disorders. Yeah, I think that's... Yes, yeah. Yeah, so that's what it is. Like, I didn't realize at the time. Yeah. But yeah, so basically that's what it was. Like, not eating right and, yeah, just to lose weight. Yeah. And did anyone in the family pick it up? Yeah, um, not just family, everyone like around me, my school, like yeah. people that never used to talk to me started talking to me and they were like, oh, we were just worried about you. Yeah. And I felt like, what? Why do you care about me now? Like, you know, before when I was chubby, no one was talking to me, no one was asking how I was doing. So yeah. in a way, like, I had to go through, like, you know, the, um, a dark side until people started realizing, oh, yeah, yeah there's something wrong with her. Yeah. So, yeah. People in my family didn't notice, but I never really, you know, talked to them about it because obviously yeah. in the African community, having mental health yeah. is something that... It's something that uh, it's not very much talked about because, yeah. you know, mental health is just, you know, we, we need to talk about it and we need to be open about yeah. it. Yes, so as a yeah. child, like, you know, in Africa, like, there was none of that. And when yeah. I came here, like, there was none of that. So I didn't see lots of African people having... um supporting or like talking about mental health and all these things so yeah is it because of the stigma that's attached to mental health um, yeah i think that's what it is because it's considered that you're going crazy but sometimes you're not no it's it's a, a yeah. lot of people go through mental health issues and if we don't um reach out and talk to people yeah you know we suffer alone and it can be a very dark place so did you reach out to anyone to talk about what you were feeling um no i didn't but I felt like I should, cause like some days were so hard. Like I really did struggle. It felt like, you know, in my body, I was like literally physically tired and spiritually I was just trying to stay awake, like yeah. trying to be happy and trying to just show everyone that I was happy. But And we were so young. Yeah, I was young. And what about your friends? Yeah, I think they noticed, but no one really cared. But yeah, at the same time, it was kind of like me acting that was fine, so I'll go to school and I'm all happy. Yeah. So do you think that, you know, these pressures to, the pressure to look a certain way is so much on the girls compared to boys or? Um, I think guys face it too, but with girls it's like, it's, it's more like it's got more pressure on girls. Yeah. Because you have to look a certain way, oh, we're going to a party, everyone goes shopping, everyone's wearing a size 6, and there's you wearing a size 10. Doesn't, doesn't look good, so does it? Yeah, no, it's, um, the, the thing is we should be happy in our own skin, but at that, same, at that age, yeah, it's I very, was, yeah. I was not thinking about that, but now I feel like um, everyone's beautiful, like you don't have to look a certain way. Yeah. And if you're made like curvy, just appreciate that because there's another skinny girl out there that wants to be like, you know, curvy. Mm. So it's like sometimes we don't have things, but yeah. we want it. Yeah. So I think that everyone should just appreciate what they have. It's true, yeah, because I'm like, uh, who said you said if you're size 6, be happy. If you're size 16, be happy. Be, be happy yeah. because that's, how, that's who you are, that's what defines you and mm. you shouldn't have to change because there's only one of you, like, there's 7 billion people in this world and yeah. there's only one of you, so why try and look like someone else mm. when no one else is going to, like, you know, look like you? It's very true. And then for, like, for example, you know, with um, mental health issues, you know, like depression and things like that, there's quite a lot of services in Australia. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There's a lot. But I feel like in the African community, there isn't enough, you know, yeah. there isn't enough knowledge around it for yeah. people to, like, I can't access it because I didn't know about, like, what's depression? Yeah. And, yeah, who do you talk to about it first? Obviously, you can't just... Mm. going to a clinic without talking to anyone about it, especially yeah. if you're so young. Yeah. So what do you think are some of the things that we can do, you know, especially in the African community or in multicultural communities, yeah. you know, where, um, how we can disseminate this information so that, you know, if there's a seven-year-old or there's, you know, a 14-year-old going through, um, you know, depression, they can sort of like reach out, so there's all these numbers to call or there's these people at school that I can talk to? Yeah, I think just basically spreading the knowledge and like teaching people like I know some the older generation some of them may not like you know be willing to um, learn about it but for us younger generations it's good for us to know about it and try and like you know spread the word out 
to those who are younger than us. Yes. And also just, you know, creating little groups or like getting in touch with um, other organizations out there to create our own little African or yeah. just not for Africans, but, you know, for people from cold background. Exactly. Yes. You know, I think it's, um, it's a very important issue and it needs to be addressed. Yeah, definitely you should yeah. because there's lots of people suffering in silence and mm. they feel like they can't talk to anyone, but there is someone that's willing to listen to you out there. You just have to try and reach out to them. It's very true. So um, you say that you wanted to send a message to the world when you started your modeling career, you know, with your iPad taking photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that message is just to love yourself and don't try and be anyone else, be yeah. you, because we only get to live once. Yes. So if you're going to live once, leave you don't try and leave other people yeah that's the only message is like be yourself mm. it's very i totally agree with you on that one you know 100 percent so um with uh, the photos when you started taking the photos you know bright lipstick bright yeah. colors how did the photos go viral how did that happen to be honest i used to <coughs> only have like 200 and something followers on instagram yes and one day i was like oh pink hair you know pink lipstick i was like oh yeah let me just post this up so yeah. I posted it up, I went to work, it was like less than two hours and it had 950 likes. And I was like, this is very unusual. Yeah. Like, I usually don't get this much likes, only 30 in like four hours. Yeah. So I was like, okay, 950, that's all right. So yeah. I finished work, it was like 2000, I was like, oh my God, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like something's not right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I then went and found out that, you know, sh the shade room, mm -hmm. they shared one of my photos. Yeah. So then everyone like started following me, those messages coming through. Yes. And yeah, just the photo was going everywhere. And um, how did that go? How far did those photos go? Um, they're pretty much like lots of people were telling me it's pretty much everywhere on the internet. Like I search up my name and I see articles and it's got like, you know, the photos with me wearing the yellow um, shirt and the pink lipstick and yes. pink hair. Yeah. So it's. It's gone out there and yeah, some celebrities liking my photos, but I can't really see it because there's so much people liking my photos, so. Yeah, so you're not keeping track because there just were too many of them. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> yeah, legit, I'm not actually, yeah, I don't actually care about yeah. like the likes. That's not yeah. what I'm trying to yeah. like, yeah. But what about like for an African child who is watching that? Um, I think it's quite inspiring because I did miss, meet a few girls um, and they're like, oh my God, yeah. you're that girl from that video, right? Yeah. I have your photos, I screenshotted it and I was like, what? I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> I was like, even I don't have photos of myself. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's, I guess in a way it's good. Like lots of people tell me, oh, um, my daughter loves you and she's yeah. only like two years old and I was just going through my Instagram. Yeah. My daughter saw a photo of you and um, she said, you're beautiful. Oh, that's so good. So if a two year old can say that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing we, we need right. more two-year-olds. Yeah, we need yeah. more two-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> so much type kindness. On the Instagram. Yes, yes, you know, that's that's really good. And then a lot of articles have been written about you, you know, from you know people in the United Kingdom. To yeah. How does that make you feel? Um, it's. I would like for them to ask for my permission so that <laughs> they know where I'm born, <laughs> not in Perth. Yes. Yeah, but it's good. Like in a way, like people are reading about me and. Yeah, I'm not even putting that much effort into it. Like, I didn't ask yeah. for this. Yeah, but you're getting free media publicity everywhere. Basically, that's what's happening. Yes. Like, yeah. I don't have to, like, contact a media um, yeah. newspaper and tell them, oh, can you write an article about me? Yeah. It's just happening. But you've redefined the face of beauty. How does that make you feel? I never thought I could do it, but it's yeah. all, yeah. I'm very happy and I'm very privileged that, you know, I'm here now, <laughs> I'm at where I am. And uh, I was reading in one of the articles, I hope this is true, um, that you call yourself um, Coco. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I call myself 100% Dark Coco. Yes. I don't know why, that was just a random name. I was like, oh, everyone else has like, you know, yeah. Melanin Goddess and all yeah. this stuff. Melanin and Queen. Like, yeah, yeah so my skin is pretty rich. And yeah. I do like the thing like cocoa, 100% yeah. dark cocoa, yeah. yeah. That is really good because, you know, like a lot of the, um, especially, you know, dark skinned people, there's been a lot of, um, you know, controversy in uh, bleaching, you know, their yeah. skin and not being happy with, you know, the type of skin that they have. Yeah, it's 
too much effort like i've thought about it but yeah. physically i just could not go to the shops i'd rather buy food with the money <laughs> I use to buy on a bleaching cream yeah and yeah it's just too much effort and at the same time i know mentally i'm going to be thinking yeah. oh wow i'm still the same person yeah mentally you're still the same person but my skin is lighter yeah so do you think that's more of like um an issue of low self-esteem why people do things yeah, like that i think that? so some people say they do it because i don't know they want to like you know they've got skin problems but yeah. some people do it because they just want to be dark, lighter yeah i think it is self low self-esteem because when i was like really low yeah i wanted to start bleaching and you know looking like everyone else because light skin yeah. was better but yeah. i'm glad i did no, I, I love the the 100 percent dark cocoa yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm glad i stayed true to myself because yes you just live life more happy like i feel like i'm not lying to myself and yeah i don't have to try and like always cover up yeah, I can just be honest and say, you know what, this is all you have. Yeah. This is who I am. Yeah, so take me or... Yeah, take me or leave me. I, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for that. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Florence, you've been calling yourself 100% duck cocoa, you know, like that is a term that I love so much and you're inspiring so many young people around the world and the message that you're sending to these young people, it's fantastic. Are you affiliated with any modeling agency at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm only modeling for um, Freedom Couture. Um, she makes wigs for um, celebrities and pretty much everyone out there. So that's the only person I'm modeling for in Perth. And yeah, hopefully I can go to America soon and get my career started. That is wonderful. We're wishing you all the success. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Florence Beto. And uh, she is a model. You can also look her up on Instagram. She has so many inspiring photos there. And uh, my name is Nkandu Belts. Thank you very much and see you soon.